uh, let's start with probabilities. So uh, just to remind you, um, given two sets, um, this is the intersection. This one here, uh, we use this um, concave symbol to denote intersection. And then, um, well, this one is just the probability of intersection of set A and set B. And then um, this one here is the probability of set A, and then this one is the probability of set B, and then the whole space is the total probability, this whole square thing here. So yeah, if you just assign values, of course, um, for example, you have a 0.5 probability for set A and then 0.3 for set B. Of course, it's going to be one um, for the whole space. And then, of course, the intersection will be smaller than the probability of set B and set A. Okay, so um, this one is about conditional probability. So what's conditional probability? So it's essentially the probability of some uh, of this set given that uh, we're looking at this set. So basically the um, intersection. No, no, sorry, it's not the intersection, sorry. Um, the probability of that happening given that we're looking at this, this, this set only. So for example, this one. See, um, we're looking at the probability of this purple shape here inside this set in set B. We can rewrite it something like this. So it's essentially the probability of the intersection of A and B over the probability of B. Understood? Why can't I see the chat? Okay. And we can um, rewrite this one as follows. So um, probability of the intersection of A and B is essentially the um, product of probability of A given B, or the conditional probability, times um, probability of B. We can generalize that to um, more sets. It's not just two sets, A and B. It could be A, B, and C. If that's the case, then we simply expand that um, like this. We read this as probability of C um, given the intersection of A and B, and then um, we go inside that. So we multiply it by the probability of intersection of A and B. Now, what is probability of intersection of A and B? It's this one. So if you expand that, it will look like this. Um, this one is probability of C given A intersect uh, with B and then times probability of A given B times probability of B. Still following? Yes. Okay, I'm just gonna assume that you understood it. We can also rewrite that as this. It's it's the same if you think about the intersection of A and B is the same as intersection of B and A. So um, if you do that, then we could just this one is equivalent to this one. The probability of A given B times probability of B is the same as probability of B. Um, given A times probability of A. And if we um, use that and replace this one here with that, we'll end up with this. So the probability of um, A given B is equal to probability of B given A times probability of A all over probability of B. And this is the base rule. So here are some um, jargons that we use for Bayes theorem. Um, this one here, the probability of A given B, is called the posterior. And A is the hypothesis. So um, think of it as the class where anything that we are uh, trying to predict. And this one, this B, the evidence, um, it's the feature. Like, um, 
given these set of features, this is going to be the class, or this is going to be the predicted value. That's the posterior. Okay, uh, this one here, the probability of B given A, it's called the likelihood. Um, the probability of A is the prior, like prior probability. And this one here, the probability of B is called the marginal probability. Okay. Yeah, I just mentioned this. Uh, again, um, A is essentially the class or um, any predicted value. Then B is our feature, our input. So we could read it as this. Uh, what is the probability of this instance uh, belonging to class Y given some features? Um, let's have a concrete example. Say um, A is um, the probability that you live in a condo in TAF, and B is the um, is you bought from S M last week. It's a probability that's that's um, set B. So let's assign some values. Um, probability of A is 0 0.3 because um, let's just say in our data set 30% of all students stay away stay in a TAF condo um, from a population of 10,000 and um, for this one uh, we have this another information 40% of food 40% of food don't live in TAF condo buys from SM this one 90% of those who live in TAF condo buys from SM. So um, those two, if you combine them, that's essentially the, sorry, it, this like blocking my screen. I can't read this one. Wait, I won't go over. Okay, I can read it now. Um, the probability, so this one, the 90% of who live in tough condo, it's uh, the probability of B given A. And it's, uh, Let's say in, in, in our um, data set, it's 0 0.9. And then the probability of B given not A is equal to 0 0.4. So uh, how do we know um, what's what's missing here? So we have the probability of A. We have um, probability of B given A. But we don't have probability of B. Right? So how do we get that? Um, we can expand that. We can um, treat it as something like this. So the probability of B is equal to probability of B given A times probability of A plus probability of B given not A times probability of A. It's basically probability of B. Right, so imagine uh, this this B wherein um, those are all um, the people who bought from SM last week. But uh, since we have A here and A is, we live in the content of so we got the, um, the, the 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 sample that um, is in TAF and that's not in TAF, but they uh, they all bought from SM last week, and um, we just add them all up. That's why it's the same as probability of B. Understood? That's just one way of rewriting it. Can't see the chat. Oh, you can see it now. So uh, with that, you can now compute for the probability of A given B. It's just that um, base base theorem is is very very simple. You just get those probabilities once you have the um, likelihood, just one likelihood, and the prior over the marginal. Then you'll get what you want. So we have to now contextualize this in um, the field of machine learning. Um, you could treat this A here as now the Y. So Y again is, is the output in ML and X is the input. So A, B, you just replace everything with that. Um, so probability of Y given X is equal to probability of X given Y times probability of Y over probability of X. Just remind you, x is the input. So these 
Um, this one is the feature. Okay, so uh, with that, um, what we're trying to do is to um, get the class that has the highest probability. Say this is a binary classification problem, zero or one. Um, you have some input. What is the probability of that to be class zero or to be class one? The ones that uh, has the highest probability is the one that um, will be predicting. So that's why in here, in the second um, equation, you'll see that um, this one is arg max. Basically the probability that has the higher value for the different classes. So that's what we're um, trying to, to compute here. But because um, we're just getting the uh, maximum, there's no need for us um, to retain the marginal probability, this p over x here, because it's essentially a constant. So we can remove that in the equation here. So this one here, this uh, pool base equation, it became just this, the probability of y times probability of x given y. So the prior and just the likelihood. Those are um, the ones that we have to compute. And um, this one here, we can rewrite it as this. So probability of y, the prior is still the same, but this one, we can expand this, the probability of x given y. Remember, x is our um, input matrix. So we have so many features in there. And uh, one assumption that we have in um, using naive base is the features are independent of each other. So we could um, basically think of that as like um, cumulative product, this one here. That's why this one is equivalent to this, given that assumption that they are independent. Still following? Okay, so um, given that equation, um, we can further simplify it by applying log transformation. So um, if you apply log to this, um, the product will become some, right? So it became like this, um, ln of um, probability of y or the prior plus the um, ln of the probability of um, the of some feature given y plus the second feature given y and so on and so forth. So this one here, it's the summation. It's all the features. You just add them all up after apply log transformation, of course. Okay, so uh, remember this equation here. Um, basically, what we need to compute for are the following, the, pr the prior and the likelihood. This one is very easy to compute because it's just the probability of that class. Basically, that the number of instances for that class over the um, number of samples that we have for that specific data set. Very easy to compute, just division. But how about this one? How about the likelihood? How about the probability of um, a certain feature given y? we'll need to have some assumptions in the distribution of our data. 